Hey guys, what's going on? It's Clever Techie, and in this video, we're gonna learn how to create a responsive navigation bar using Bootstrap 4. Now, what I realized is there is a lot of Bootstrap class names to remember, and we also need to know which HTML tags to apply them to. So, I decided to create this cheat sheet where in the first column, you can see all the HTML tags colored in green, and in the second column, you can see all the Bootstrap classes colored in blue. So that way, you can immediately know which Bootstrap class belongs to which HTML element. There are also HTML attribute names which I colored in yellow and finally attribute values are in gray. I also used indent spacing to make it clear that these attributes belong to their respective HTML tags. So I'm gonna keep referencing this cheat sheet throughout this video and you guys will see that it helps a lot in the process of creating our navbar. All right, so I've created this basic workspace so we can get started working on our navbar. And one thing to know before we get started is you have to include the jQuery file before bootstrap files in order for the collapse and dropdown functionality to work. So make sure you include a jQuery file before bootstrap CSS and bootstrap JavaScript. I've also included a custom CSS where I'm importing a Montserrat font from Google and I'm simply applying it to the body. Okay, so let's go ahead and create the basic responsive navbar first. So by looking at our cheat sheet, you can see that the basic navbar consists of four HTML elements and five bootstrap classes. So let's go ahead and create the first HTML element with these two bootstrap classes. Okay, so nav class equals navbar, navbar expand. I'm gonna go ahead and use MD to collapse the navbar at medium screen sizes. The next HTML element is UL with a class name navbar-nav. The next one is list item and then we're gonna have a A with a nav-link inside of a list item. So let's go ahead and create those two next. A class equals nav dash link. I'm also gonna add a href with a pound so the link is clickable. I'm gonna put link one. And now I'm just gonna copy this multiple times. Name this link two, three, and four. And that's it for our basic nav bar. Let's go ahead and view it in the browser. And that's our responsive navbar. If I drag the window, you can see that it's collapsing at the medium screen size. Now let's play around with appearance a little bit. As you can see, the first four classes in the appearance tab belong to nav HTML tag. The navbar dark goes well with BG dark and navbar light goes well with BG light. So let's go ahead and see what they look like. So first I'm gonna apply navbar light and BG light and that will create a light navbar. Now let's change that to navbar dark and bg dark. And now we'll create a dark navbar. And uh, you can also apply all the bg colors like primary, success, bg warning, bg info, and bg danger. So let's go ahead and add BG primary, for example, view it in the browser and you can see that it, now our nav bar is blue. You can also apply any of the other ones. Let's say danger and that will make our nav bar red. I'm gonna go ahead and change it back to dark. And so you can go ahead and experiment with all of these. All of these work on the nav bar HTML tag. Okay, now we're gonna go ahead and add some text and logo to our navbar. Okay, so for the text and logo, we're simply gonna add the span and a HTML tags with navbar text and navbar brand classes. Okay, we're gonna do this inside of our nav HTML tags. So the first one I'm gonna add is span class equals navbar text. Put some text in there. 
And the second one I'm gonna add is a class equals navbar brand. And inside of this A class, I'm gonna add IMG SRC equals clever gear dot PNG, which is a clever techie logo. Close this one. And now we can see what it looks like in a browser. And you can see that it added the text with a clever techie logo. And that's how easy it is to add text and logo to our navbar. Okay, before we apply position classes to our navbar, let's go ahead and create a header on top of our navbar. This is so I can properly demonstrate the sticky top class. So on top of our navbar here, I'm gonna go ahead and add a new div with a bootstrap class named Jumbotron. And I'm gonna go ahead and apply custom styling to it to remove the bottom margin. So margin bottom, zero PX. I'm also gonna go ahead and add some content inside of the header. Add a paragraph as well with something like let's learn web development. Close this tag. Now let's see what it looks like in a browser. Refresh the page. And now you can see that it added a huge header on top of our navbar with a header and a paragraph. Now in order to scroll past this navbar, we also have to add some content at the bottom of the navbar so we can properly see sticky top in action. So let's go ahead and add the image in the bottom of, of our navbar. So I'm gonna say img src equals bootstrap for navbar cheat sheet dot png. And I'm also gonna go ahead and add a class named img dash fluid to make this image responsive. Now let's see what it looks like. And now we can start adding our position classes to see how our navbar behaves. So let's go ahead and do that right now. Let's do the fix dash top first. Now, as you can see, this fixed the navbar at the top of the page and it also overlaid the header. Now let's do the fixed bottom and displace our navbar at the bottom of the screen. And finally, sticky top. If we scroll past the navbar here, you can see that it starts to stick at the top of the page. So that's the functionality of the sticky top. And that's it for the position of our navbar. Let's move on to the collapse. Okay, so to add the collapse functionality to our navbar, we're gonna go ahead and add a button with two attributes, data toggle and data target. The data toggle is gonna have a collapse value and data target is gonna have a name of our target that we're collapsing. We're also gonna add a span class inside of our button tag for the navbar toggler icon. Then we're gonna go ahead and wrap our navbar links in a div with the same ID as the target name in a toggler. And we're also gonna add a class called navbar collapse to that same div. The reason for adding this functionality is to let the user manually decide when they want to expand or collapse the navbar. Bootstrap is going to hide our navbar links at a breaking point and show the toggler button instead, allowing us to collapse and expand the navbar by clicking on the button. Okay, so inside of our nav tag, let's go ahead and create the button first with a class navbar toggler. It's also going to have two attributes data toggle with a value collapse and data target with our target name. So data toggle equals collapse and data target. The target name can be anything. I'm gonna go ahead and name it collapse underscore target. We also gotta add the span tag inside of the button to add that toggler icon. So a span tag with a navbar toggler icon class. And our button is ready. Let's see what it looks like in a browser. I'm gonna go ahead and reduce the window size until it collapses. And now you can see the button is showing up here. Now all we have to do is wrap our links inside of the div tag to make them collapsible. Okay, so we're gonna have to wrap the content which we want to collapse in a div tag, including the text and the logo. 
So let's go ahead and create a new div here. And the class of this div is going to be collapse and navbar collapse. We're also gonna add an attribute named ID with the same target name as data target. So collapse and navbar collapse first. Collapse, navbar, collapse. And the attribute name is once again ID with a target name collapse underscore target. And make sure that for the data target, you actually include the pound here, otherwise it's not going to work. So I'm gonna go ahead and fix that here. And uh, we're gonna go ahead and close our, our div down here at the bottom of the UL tag. Now let's go ahead and see if this works. Gonna go ahead and reduce the window size. And now you can see that in fact reduced, it collapsed the navbar. And if I click on it, it's going to go ahead and expand the navbar. And that's it. That's We now have a responsive navbar with a custom collapse button. The last thing we're going to do is add drop down menu to one of our navigation links. So for the drop down menu, it's actually very similar to what we just did to the collapse. We're first going to identify the area which is going to collapse or expand our menu. And then we're going to create the actual menu itself. So for the list item here, we're going to add a class named drop down. So I'm going to use this on our first list item. I'm just going to say drop down. And then for the A, we're going to add drop down toggle class. And also we're going to have to add two attributes data toggle with a value drop down and ID with our target name. So data toggle equals dropdown, data target equals, and once again, the data target can be any name. I'm gonna name it dropdown underscore target. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and rename this link one here to dropdown. And I'm also gonna go ahead and add a span here with a class named caret. And this is not on the cheat sheet, but this one is really easy to remember. And all it does is it adds the arrow next to the link. So let's see what it looks like. And this is our drop down menu with a carrot next to it. Now let's go ahead and create the actual drop down menu next. All right, so the next thing we're gonna do is add the actual drop down menu content itself. And you wanna make sure that you're still inside the list item of the link that we're gonna be clicking to expand and collapse our menu. So I'm gonna go ahead and add the div inside of our list item here with a class name dropdown menu. And it's also going to have an attribute name aria labeled by with our target name. And the target name is of course dropdown target. Okay, so the last thing we're gonna add is the actual links inside of our dropdown menu. And of course the links are created with a tag with a class named dropdown item. So a class equals dropdown item. I'm gonna name the first link PHP videos. And then I'm just gonna copy this whole thing. Name this one CSS videos and bootstrap videos. I'm also gonna go ahead and add that divider between the list items just to see its functionality. So a div with a class name dropdown divider. Okay, now let's see what it looks like in a browser. Refresh the page, click on our dropdown menu, and now we have our menu showing up. Now, if you guys wanna make this dropdown menu horizontal instead of vertical, we can simply wrap these links inside a UL HTML tag with a class name navbar-nav 
and this will make our drop down menu horizontal so let's go ahead and do that right now so ul class equals nav bar dash nav close the ul tag here refresh the page and now we have a horizontal menu and if i reduce the size of this window it's going to collapse and then click on this button i can also expand our drop down menu here and you can see that everything is working and that's our responsive navbar with bootstrap 4. you guys may download the cheat sheet in the description of this video and if you like this video please like share and subscribe clever techie out